In this video, we're going to go over more upgrades for RC Racing. This time I'm not going to go over upgrades specific to stock racing, but upgrades that I might have missed from the last video. These are more just things you can buy for your car to improve its performance, tune it, or generally improve the looks. Before you begin, however, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as we're getting really close to a thousand subs. Without further delay, let's get started. First, let's go over things you can add to your car to not necessarily as an upgrade, but as a tuning option. These are things like brass and steel weights, different transmissions, and other things of the sort. Brass or steel bulkheads or pivot blocks are usually used to increase the front weight to increase front grip and are almost always used on high grip surfaces like AstroTurf and carpet. This is also the case when it comes to things like servo and ESC plates as the majority of the weight will be moved towards the front. The reason why this is done on carpet and Astro is because the grip is so high you don't really need the extra weight over the rear in order to gain traction. You can also choose what kind of arms you want for your car depending on your grip level. Usually flat arms are better for lower grip and gull wing arms are better for higher grip. Moving further down the car we have battery weights. These come in many varieties and many different weights. The main reason why you'd want to put weight in the middle of the car would be the same as why engines are put in the middle of supercars. It's much easier for a car to rotate in a corner if the weight is concentrated in the middle of the car than it is if it's hanging out in the back. Thus having the majority of your weight in the middle will allow your car to rotate better in corners. Along with that, some cars allow you to either run softer or stiffer side guards to even fully di different types of chassis that allow you to change how the car drives. For example, Schumacher cars allow you to choose between a fully carbon fiber chassis or an aluminum for different surfaces mostly. Moving further down the car once again, we have your transmission type. You can buy many different types of transmissions depending on your car. For example, you can buy four different types of transmissions for the team associated B6.3. Lay down, lay back, stand up, and four gear. All from high grip to low grip respectively. Each subsequent transmission I just listed from first to last all are built to progressively move the motor back further and further, with the four gear being as far back as you can go without going to a full rear motor setup. Now say you don't want to run a different transmission. Maybe you don't have all the parts needed to use one or perhaps you're like me and you're just lazy and don't want to go through the hassle of changing the whole trans. You can usually get away with just moving the battery back and putting some extra weight in the rear in the form of either a brass seal, a uh, C&D block, or these tiny little weights that you can put anywhere in the car you please. They aren't as popular these days as there's a lot less space to use them but they still come in handy. At this loose dirt track called RC3 Raceway, I was able to use a laydown transmission with a couple of extra weights behind the motor. I was able to win the stock class that day, and the guy in second was also using a laydown transmission. I was able to do well with my short course truck as well, which also had a laydown transmission. One thing that would have been quite good for this specific track would have been these VRP XV2 pistons. There are many different types of pistons out there with many different settings you can change. Some have larger holes, some smaller, others change the amount of holes altogether. These VRP pistons are meant to improve the valving action over very rough terrain. Again, would have been quite nice over this track you're seeing now. Now there are plenty more tuning hop-ups you can buy. Some of them are specific to different platforms, but we'd be here all day if I listed them all, so let's move on. These next few hop-ups are meant to do one thing, and that's to reduce the chances of your car breaking in a crash. You can replace pretty much any part of your car with aluminum hop-ups, from steering components to entire suspension arms, though for the latter, I would say avoid them like the plague. Way too much weight. The first two aluminum upgrades I recommend getting would be the pivot block slash bulkhead and the servo horn, both of which are prone to breaking from time to time. I can't tell you how many times I broke my plastic servo horn on my old low C2250. Another thing that people tend to upgrade is their shock towers. This kind of falls under the category of tuning options, but it also has a little bit to do with durability as well. Most race spec vehicles these days come with carbon fiber shock towers, so that's actually something you don't have to worry about for the most part in terms of them breaking. Carbon fiber tends to have more flex than aluminum, but aluminum is stronger for the most part. It's important to note, however, that when switching from carbon fiber to aluminum, and vice versa, that you are changing the flex characteristics of the car. This in turn can change how the car drives to an extent, not to mention all the geometry changes that comes with an aftermarket shock tower. Other small durability upgrades include, but are not limited to, machined internals for the transmission, hardened shock shafts if your car has them as an upgrade, aftermarket turnbuckles to avoid them bending, titanium screw kits to avoid head stripping, 
and aluminum shot caps to make sure they don't pop off in a bad crash. Something I wanted to say, however, at the end of this video was this. All of these upgrades, all of these hop-ups, and all of this money spent is, if you're just starting out or are a beginner in general, in the end, kind of pointless. The only two mandatory upgrades I'd say would be absolutely needed would be an aluminum servo horn and an aluminum bulkhead slash pivot block, since those two plastic pieces are prone to breaking. Everything else from ceramic bearings to slipper eliminators to lightened screw kits are all complete wastes of time and money if you're just starting out. To put it simply, you don't need the upgrades to be a better driver, you need to be a better driver for the upgrades to matter. And that's why the number one thing you can get is time. Time on the driver stand, time working on your car, time walking around and understanding the track and all its little intricacies, and time spent watching and learning from others who know more than you do. Especially that last part. I recently did a race at RC3 Raceway in Huntsville, Alabama, and it was my first time ever running on a low grip outdoor track with a 10th scale car. It was a huge learning curve, and I definitely was not going to be able to win on my own. I learned from Mitch Arnold how to tune a ball dip well enough for outdoor turf and what type of tires to use. I then got those tires with the help of Brock Peterson and Justin Whitaker who showed me a quick way to glue them, and by observing the lines that a lot of the faster mod guys took, I did my best to mimic them. In the end, that is what led me to win that day. Other than bearings and a servo horn, my Yokomo YZ2 is stock, and my SE6.2 is actually fully stock. Hell, I even have this heavy wing on the back actively hurting performance simply because I don't feel like changing wings when they break all the time. In conclusion, the best upgrades you can get for your car are some decent tires, a decent setup, and a driver mod. That's all for now. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, comment what you thought of it, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We are now really close to a thousand subs and that's genuinely amazing to me. Also, if you want to support me another way, be sure to subscribe to my Patreon where I post updates on when and what my vi next videos will be. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my patrons Lucas Tarka, Michael Williams, Casey Nix, and my new patron, Ben Reeves. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.